My name is Kevin Coca-Cola. I train thoroughbred racehorses for Shadwell Stables. What is Shadwell? Shadwell Stables is a division of Shadwell Farm, which is owned by Sheikh Hamdan bin Rashid Al Maktoum of the Royal Family of Dubai. It's a global entity. We have horses in Australia, Ireland, England, as well as the United States, France. Um, our duty here is to get all the horses ready that are going to run in the United States, and they go to different trainers. Um, Chad Brown, Karen McLaughlin, Danny Pites, Mike Pino, those are our main trainers, usually in New York, Kentucky. Florida. So yeah, we will send occasionally horses from here overseas to run in England with trainers over there or even in Dubai. How many barns are there? Is there one or is there many? We have, they have three farms in Kentucky um, and all the yearlings are, we have homebreds that are all born up there in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, they have about 6,000 acres between the three farms and then they also buy a lot of horses in the September sales at Keeneland. Um, those horses come about September when they feel they're ready. Um, they will uh, ship down here to begin their process of being broke and uh, teaching them the ropes of becoming a racehorse. So how long have you been in the horse business? I've been working with racehorses for a little over 32 years. I started at the Detroit Race Course where I grew up in Detroit, Michigan. Um, started as a hot walker, worked my way to groom foreman and then uh, got my assistant trainer's license and I've been with uh, Shadwell Stables for 10 years now. The first horse that got me into it was a horse named Seattle Slough in 1977. I was only nine years old. I had never touched a horse in my life, but I just enjoyed watching the big races on TV. And then I ended up in high school with a substitute teacher who used to walk horses out at the racetrack in Detroit, and he encouraged me to give it a try because he knew it was something I was interested in, and I fell in love with it right away. So here at Shadwell, what is your daily schedule? Our schedule, we our employees come in about 5 o'clock in the morning, so we get an early start. All the horses are turned out in paddocks or hand walk to stretch their legs a little before they go into training. And the horses train in sets, usually 8 to 10 horses at a time. We have about 6 sets daily. Um, we start training about 6.45 at daylight, and we're done about 10.30 in the morning. Um, the horses get a little break in the afternoon, so I'm go back out in the paddocks for the day, um, and then we bring them in, regroom them again in the afternoon, and are they're fed again at four o'clock in the afternoon. So they're fed twice a day, um, eleven thirty ish in the morning and four o'clock in the afternoon. And we have people here around the clock. We have day watchmen, night watchmen, so the horses are never left alone. Um, so they're they're very well taken care of. So what is the daily care that goes into your racehorses every day? Well, um, they're taken care of really well. Um, the grooms early in the morning clean the stalls. They're bedded down nice and deep with straw, fluffy straw, so they're, they're a little extra even on cold days. Um, the legs are checked every day by my assistants. Um, anything out of the ordinary, we will have a vet look at. Um, our vets stop in on a daily basis um, if we have anything of any questions um, that needs to be addressed. They're checked after every workout. Um, we do regular vaccinations for the flu and rhino and, and West Nile. Um, at the end of the morning after they train, um, they all get a, a liniment massage usually on the legs, either beagle oil or absorbine or alcohol and usually done up in a bandage. Um, keep the flies off their legs, keep them from stomping too much and hurting themselves that way. So they're kind of padded and protected pretty good and um, they get a nice uh, spa day pretty much on a regular basis. A um, little extra after a faster workout but um, feet are taken care of daily, uh, legs are taken care of daily and uh, we, try to, we try to take uh, first class care of all of our horses. On a faster day of workout, what would you say that you do differently? Like more enhanced? Um, they will they'll cool out afterwards a little bit longer. We walk them extra time, make sure they've caught their breath and watered out off properly, don't drink too much too quick. Um, we will do up all four legs and usually in the front we they put what they call a poultice on. 
Um, it's almost like making a little cast for them. And it's just something that draws heat, um, anything, because obviously their legs are going to be a little bit tired, a little bit hot, um, maybe a little muscle sore. Um, it takes that sting out of them. It makes them feel a lot better. It takes the heat out, and it just allows them to relax so much nicer. And then we, they all get the day off the next day after they do what is called a breeze, which is when you let them go at a little more closer to race speed, getting them ready for races. They get the day off the next day, just uh, walk, they don't train. So um, we try to, you know, take care of them according to what they do on a daily basis. Some train a little harder than others, some may just trot or jog. Um, so you kind of take care of them in accordance to what they're doing each day. How many horses do you guys have currently? Currently we have uh, 48 horses in training. That doesn't include our two ponies. Um, so we have to print a schedule basically like this is what our set list looks like um, they're all divided by eight to ten horses a piece um, every rider knows what they're doing before they get on them their name is next to the horse they're galloping the distance they're going to gallop um, we try to arrange it um, different sets every day mix them up so each horse gets a chance to go out early each horse gets a chance to go out late um, get the better track early in the morning it might be getting a little deeper at, later in the morning so we try to mix them up so every horse um, gets a chance on every type of racetrack it just gets them used to what they're going to have to endure when they go up to the races um, we have gotten up to 65 horses at one point um, but it's kind of a revolving door with the older horses as we get them ready we try to ship them up to the races as they get fit and closer to ready to run the babies will stay here for a good six to eight months before they will ever leave our care and go to the races with these sets, when you say you switch them, do you also do that so they won't have too much familiarity with all the other horses? That's like yeah. they're working. With yeah, them. it's good to move them around and, and take horses out of certain sets. Um, there's some that pair up really well together, and you might keep them together. But there's also it's it's good for them to get used to going with other horses because um, this horse and his buddy may be separated and go to different trainers down the line. So it's it's good to not let them get too herd bound. Um, let them make sure that they're used to going with other horses and training with other horses and that helps them in the, in the future when they get to the racetrack. So of all the horses you have trained, what are your favorite that you've had? Um, I've had the good fortune of working with a lot of really well-bred horses. I was with um, Neil Howard for 15 years, which was Lane's End Farm, the, the Mr. Farish and uh, the Farish family. Um, so Mine Shaft, uh, Secret Status were two of my favorites there. Here I would say uh, in the 10 years with Shadwell, Shagaf, Mohamen, um, horses like that. Um, they were very, very nice horses, um, grade one winners, and just, you know, a pleasure to work around horses like that. What is your favorite stories of training and grooming and hot walking? I think the there's so many, because um, you meet so many interesting people on the racetrack, but I think um, I think the traveling is just my favorite part, and there's almost too many stories to tell, but you, you go to so many different states and see so many different tracks and so many different people, and being able to meet a lot of even celebrities, um, pro athletes, um, actors and actresses that are involved in it, um, it's just a lot of fun, and it, it, I think it opens a lot of doors to that people don't realize. Uh, there's, there's a lot of interesting people, and it's a tight knit community. I think a lot of the racetrack people, no matter where you go, there's always a connection kind of with everybody. If you were given the opportunity, if you started over completely, and we're given another opportunity with career, would you pick this one again? Absolutely. Would you do anything um, different? No, you know, when I was nine years old, I thought I was going to be a jockey. Oh. <laughs> As you can see, I outgrew that dream, and I pretty much realized then that I was going to be too tall for that. But I had made up my mind then that my next, uh, I would set my sights on being a trainer. And everything I've done, you know, I've been lucky. I've had the good fortune working with some really good outfits, and I've kind of achieved the goals that I wanted. So. This has been pretty much my passion from the time I was a kid, so I wouldn't do anything different.